Hello there, I'm Leo Wardrop for Kit Guru, and this huge great case is the Antec P380. It's their new king of performance, top of the heap, absolutely right up there. Uh, the overwhelming impression when you first look at it is, apart from the fact it's large because it's an E80X model, is so it's sizable, is look. No bays, all aluminium smoothness and loveliness. Uh, this panel on the front and on the top, uh, four, four millimeter aluminium. Uh, let me just give you a quick tour, forgive me, uh, reflections in the window. Uh, go around. And I'll just take off that panel so we don't have to worry about any more reflections. Two thumb screws, little bit of a pull, and away it comes. And there you go, plenty of lots. We've got eight uh, drive bays here. These caddies uh, mount either a two and a half or a three and a half inch drive, simply slide out. You require uh, screws, however, to actually fix the drives in place. At the top, we've got two five and a quarter bays, although curiously, as there's no uh, opening at the front, you can't actually install an optical drive, so it's kind of a stashing stuff in there sort of thing. Uh, as you'll see when I pull the case apart, at the rear we have a 120 fan and we have two 140s in the top and they have a little flick switch for uh, controlling speed. This is what uh, Antec calls a two-cool. We've previously seen tri-cool, which obviously is three positions. These are two-cool. Um, that's the headline stuff with it. The thing about the lack of um, drive bays, because obviously they're going for a very sleek and stylish thing, as you'll see, you do have the option of putting a laptop drive in this cavity here, because you see, my hands will fit behind this front aluminium panel, and that's where you have a sort of a mesh intake over an air filter. So it's, it's smart, it's big. Uh, I think we've got nine expansion slots at the rear. Yes, indeed. So you can put pretty much any, um, motherboard you fancy inside it once you start getting to the extended end of the scale you do have to start being a little bit cautious because some of those extended and workstation type boards are blooming enormous as we know so uh you people looking to go for intel uh, uh lga 2011 uh, extreme might want to be a bit cautious about the precise motherboard you're selecting but on the face of it this case has plenty to offer stacks of drive base heaps of cooling and the thing is that uh, uh you can actually change the fans. Uh, the figures suggest that you can go for a 360 radiator at the top or a 240, and um, basically a 360 and a 240 or a 240 and a 360. So two hefty great radiators. That's what the figures suggest. Although, let me just grab for this uh, setup sheet. That is the setup sheet that came with this case. I mean, utterly pathetic. Uh, I went to um, Antec's website and downloaded a proper PDF manual, which is over about a dozen pages, which shows a great more detail. I I'm going to assume they just messed up and didn't send me the correct manual with this. I'm, I'm going to be pleasant. I'm going to assume that that PDF is what you should get. Uh, the other thing um, is that all the fasteners are all mixed up in a bag. So the dubious manual or setup sheet and the bag of fasteners without a lot of uh, guide as to what's going on, in fact, that caused me some concern. It, it made me approach this one with caution. Uh, but anyway, let's get on, let's build a system, let's see what we find inside the P380. Taking the P380 apart for installing your components is not difficult. Off with the side panels, perhaps off with the top, maybe off with the front. Bit of cable feeding to do, few screws, it's not particularly tricky. Um, However, to get to this stage, uh, as I'll explain in a second, is rather more involved. Uh, before I do that, let's just take a quick look at the top panel. Now, these are the side-mounted I.O. ports there. And if we look from the inside, that there is the module that the uh, panel ports are on, which is why you've got this uh, snake of cables feeding away. Uh, to reverse the ports from the one side to the other, you simply remove that screw, that screw, lift it up, turn it around, put it down because it's symmetrical, reinstall uh, the two screws, and then the ports are on the other side. Um, the thing with that obviously is that the case has uh, one windowed panel. So if you're into the left hand, right hand thing, uh, it sort of makes sense to have the case you'd think with the innards on show, in which case it's gonna sit where it sits. But if for some reason you want the ports on the other side, that's how you do it. The other thing is the front panel also with this uh, great big uh, chunky aluminium panel on it. Uh, there we have the large uh, filter. This peculiar gadget here is a mount for a slimline optical drive, which 
has got four uh, screw holes and it goes uh, lines up with these four holes here and then uh, attaches so that your uh, optical drive mounts to the side like so. So this sort of peculiar cavity uh, uh, holds the optical drive and obviously from the front it's all stealthy. Um, I'm not completely sure, I'm mad keen on that, however it, it is a mechanism, it does work. Let's put all that to one side. Now to get the case to this stage, which I think of as the Terminator stage, where it's sort of stripped down just to the skeleton, is quite literally revealing. Um, when I first saw that the case supports two 140 fans at the front or three 120s and the same at the top, my immediate thinking was two 140s, that's a 280 radiator, three 110s, that's a 360 radiator and the same. Put it another way, two big radiators potentially, one for your CPU, one for your GPU. Hurrah. Now, in fairness to Antec, when you actually get their uh, PDF user manual, uh, it doesn't actually make any reference to radiators whatsoever. It purely talks about fans. Now, two 120s, you could usually replace the 240 radiator. You have to allow, obviously, for the thickness of the radiator and a bit of space either end for the hoses and so on. But provided you have the space, there shouldn't be an issue with it. Uh, but as I say, in fairness to Antec, they don't actually refer to radiators. On the other hand, would you buy this huge case and then install that many fans, no liquid cooling? I don't think so. Anyway, they do in the manual spell out how you remove the drive bays and drive towers here. This actually is three blocks, the top, which is the two uh, five and a quarters, and the top two uh, drives, uh, three and a half, two and a half drives, and then you have three, and then you have uh, another three, so three, three and two, eight. So you, you basically remove a bunch of screws, and you can remove uh, the towers along with the bays. Or caddies. The thing is that removing them is really awkward. These, this pile of 31 screws here, you have to remove screws from the front, from the sides, a few from the inside, and some from underneath. It is very much a case of you don't want to be doing this once you've installed your motherboard. There are plenty of manufacturers who will have you remove drive towers and caddies. You take a couple of thumb screws, you slide the whole block out, it couldn't be easier. And then the next, maybe possibly the bottom mount might require four screws you have to do from underneath. And you can very often then move the towers around within the case, perhaps from this position to further back, say to the middle of the case if you choose to do that. Or indeed you can take a, a tower from uh, lower down and put it up here. Uh, with the Antec you don't get any of that, you have to remove a lot of screws uh, even to the extent where these sorts of uh, parallel power reset buttons you have to remove the two screws that mount each block to take them out of the way to get to screws that are behind them before you put them back. It is fiddly and as I say Antec doesn't actually mention radiators so there is a sort of thing of well are you really going to ditch all of your lovely drive bays to put a radiator in the front you might do or you might think it's more useful to have all the drum drive bays and put a radiator in the top in place of the two fans which is the obvious easy quick thing to do but it does sort of throw up the thing of on the one hand you don't really have the option of putting two big radiators in the case unless you completely gut the thing first as i have done here obviously i could put a second radio radiator up here for my graphics card uh, as you'll see from the hose routing from the front radiator mount uh, through to the CPU, it's a bit mm, not really quite right. Um, it, it's, I don't know, it just looks a bit messy to my eyes. Um, the other thing is that stripping the case down in this way actually highlights uh, some curiosities with it. The drive towers are flimsy as anything. Uh, the reason they've got 31 screws is basically to hold the whole thing rigid without so many screws, and they are tiddly little screws. I mean, they're absolutely minute little things just a few more long, um, but without so many screws holding every single uh, aspect of the towers, the whole thing would flop around terribly, and I don't quite understand why they couldn't have made them a trifle more uh, solid. But anyway, they go. Once you take them out, you're basically left with a box. Um, and you'll notice that the uh, two breakout panels for the optical drive bays at the front, except of course we don't have any optical drive bays at the front, we have two five and a quarter inch sort of uh, compartments, but there are no front mounted uh, ports for um, the uh, for optical drives. So these kind of make no sense and it suggests that either this bare chassis is actually used in some uh, other model within the Antec range or they kind of changed their mind and thought actually let's go for the smooth and sleek thing but that uh, doesn't make any sense to me. 
So when you pull the case to pieces, you don't have, in my mind, a 160 pound case. You actually have a fairly boring, large, not that great actually, steel box. And it's all a bit cheap and cheerful. The, the look of these uh, caddies is, it's not exactly superficial, but, but that is one of the highlights of the case, along with the top panel and the front panel. Once I've removed all the drive towers and taken off the panels, it's actually fairly unimpressive. However, I'm gonna reiterate, this is not what Antec suggests you do. They don't mention radiators. So, although this was my natural instinct was in with a big radiator and off we go, in actual fact, this is a bit of a false start. So let's move on and let's uh, install the system the way it should be installed. With the drive towers installed and the rad uh, radiator in the top of the case, uh, so I've taken out the two stock uh, fr uh, top fans and I've uh, left the rear fan in place. Uh, with the radiator in the top of the case, drive towers back in the front and all the other components installed, I think we can agree the finished build looks very pretty indeed. Um, it's certainly neat and tidy, and at least in part that's because there's so much space inside the case that chucking in your motherboard and other components is pretty straightforward, provided that is you follow Antec's game plan. Uh, the major components I've used are uh, Intel Core i7, ASRock Z97 killer motherboard, Sapphire R9290 Trix uh, graphics card. Down at the bottom we've got a C-Sonic Platinum 2 1200 watt power supply. There's the Corsair H110i GT liquid cooler at the top, that's 280mm radiator and there's a SanDisk uh, SSD in one of those um, drive caddies. And those are big, hefty, grunty gaming components and they just go inside the case without no, any trouble at all. Clearly there's space there for two or three graphics cards, uh, again, and it doesn't matter whether you go down the AMD or NVIDIA route, they, they're just gonna go in it's nice and straightforward. I've um, taken out the top of the drive tower, so those two sort of, as far as I'm concerned, fake five and a quarter inch bays because there's no external um, opening for an optical drive, so they're just for putting stuff in, and two of the eight uh, drive bays. Um, I've taken those out because the 280 radiator uh, the hoses wanted to kind of go around in that curve at the front um, and even though the mounts are slotted you get a little bit of latitude for where the radiator goes or radiator stroke fans go. Um, you don't actually get a lot of say in the matter and considering there's a lot of space in this case uh, a 280 radiator I would have thought I'd have had more um, say in the matter but I didn't so it's gone where it's gone which is sort of in the middle slightly to the front. The hoses I haven't bothered cranking them around in a horrible tight angle. Just um, curve, I just took out the two top uh, drive bays and, and we're all happy. So there are plenty of drive bays, there's plenty of space for the radiator, it's all good, easy peasy. Obviously if we went for uh, a smaller liquid cooler or indeed an air cooler, the build would be just as straightforward as, as it, straightforward can be. But I'm not happy. And the reason I'm not happy is that I, I consider that Antec has built this case and they've gone for, there are some primary things. We're gonna go for this uh, aluminium panel thing or the smooth no openings and all the rest of it. That's the overwhelming um, consideration. And in fairness, that, that works very well. Cosmetically, I like this case a great deal. Uh, although I don't consider it, you see, to be an ends in itself. Now, for instance, they, they've given you this piece of plastic so you can mount an optical, uh, laptop optical drive uh, sideways, and, and that's fine. I don't see why they don't install it uh, at the factory. I don't actually see why they couldn't have used a bit of nous and come up with a way of installing a regular five and a quarter drive. I mean, this is a big case, and that, that sideways uh, opening, it, I don't see it would be that difficult. Uh, but they haven't, and there we go. The thing is that when, when we reviewed the Antec 1900 about a year ago, the two major failings it had were that it was a very tall case. Cosmetically, I liked it, but it was a very tall case, and this sort of twin power supply thing they had going on. The, ma the main power supply uh, cavity was in the bottom of the case, and that meant it was a huge stretch to the top of the case to connect your cables. They've clearly uh, got round that with this because it's single power supply and it's not an enormously tall case, so that's fine. The other thing was the drive towers were fixed and that was a common complaint. And Antic obviously heard us, but I don't think they truly believed us because if they did, they wouldn't have come up with such a, a horrible mounting system. So they said, what they're saying is, yes, you can remove the drive towers and drive bays if you must, but we're, we're not really gonna make your life any easier. Uh, so it is technically possible, but that's about all you can say. So they are screwed in place rather than riveted, but that, that's as good as it is. And the thing is, if you take out 
this and the other uh, bays, apart from the fact you lose the sort of the uh, nice cosmetic thing, there is nowhere to mount an SSD. There are no drive bays on the back of the motherboard tray. You take out the tower, there are zero drive bays. And that says to me that Antec is saying, well, why do we need a ninth or a tenth bay to which you would say, well, you don't. What you need is one or two. Um, but they clearly cannot comprehend anybody might remove their lovely, glorious two and a half, three and a half inch drive bays and you know, take the entire stack out. That is just obviously not even on their agenda. So they haven't given you that option. Uh, but they have given you the option of, or well, they've given you the feature of these hidden power and reset buttons that are tucked away behind the panel out of sight. That's fair enough. They've given you the reversible I.O. so you can either have the ports and connects on the left or the right. Fair enough. No harm in that whatsoever. But I don't wake up in the morning thinking if only the front and top panels of my case were smooth and unblemished with ports and connectors. I don't think that for one second. Um, in fact, what I'd like to be able to do is to kind of reach for the case and plug in a flash drive or something like that, really, or a games controller. I they're sort of fiddling around going inside, but it, it looks good, there's no choice about it. But this form and function thing, that front filter is here. To remove it, you have to slide it out of the bottom. Well, how do you do that? I mean, it's, unless you rock the case on its back or stand it up on something and slip it out, it's impossible. Um, and that's and it's a big, heavy case. It's a big, heavy case when it's built. It's big, heavy when it's empty. Build it, it gets bigger and heavier. So. They haven't thought that through. Why doesn't the filter go to the side? Why isn't it split so it's two small filters that go to the side? What are they playing at? Um, so they, they've, they've worked on this aluminium panel thing. They've achieved that, no two ways about it. But the, the important details, such as the drive bays, as far as I'm concerned, they got that wrong. The air filter is wrong. The IO panel is right. The optical drive, really? I mean, yeah, you don't need an optical drive. Obviously, you don't. But with a case this large, they should have done a better job. The idea there are no uh, SSD bays uh, on the back or somewhere else in the system, I, I don't understand. Cable management is fairly good. The grommets aren't brilliant, um, but you can feed the cables around quite neatly, as you'll see in the photos. Uh, cooling and noise. This is a big case that flows a lot of air, but it's heavily vented. So... Um, if you crank up the fan speed, it makes a lot of noise. Um, uh, if you keep the fan speed down low, then it's quiet, but it's not actually that great at cooling. Um, surprisingly so, you'd think a huge case like this would just do anything you wanted. It isn't quite like that. They've put some noise deadening material inside the uh, side panels, but I can see straight through the top of the case, through the vents and such like. It's, you know, the, the emphasis on, on the styling hasn't helped it in that regard. So it strikes me that Antec has moved on a step from the 1900, uh, but the P380, it's not the greatest performance case ever. It certainly can be used to build an E80X system with a bunch of graphics cards, and you can come up with a really neat uh, finished system, and that, that's absolutely without a shadow of a doubt. But there are so few enthusiast options in this case that um, the, the idea that the price is just under £160, I find quite startling. Uh, it's an attractive cosmetic case, absolutely. But it's not quite fair to say, and that's, that's the end of the matter, because there is more to it than that. But it needs work. And the idea they're going for the real high end of the market, the £160 price tag, I... Ooh, no thanks. So, Antec has certainly improved this past year. But uh, this case, it's, it's not there yet. Um, scope for improvement... Uh, however, cosmetically, I like it a great deal. So there we go. Um, this is Leo Waldock for Kit Guru, and this is the Antec P380.